My people, it be like say EU people won't finish I neck. My people, no be smart, you know. It be like say this EU people they mean business. So hey. the way we tell they use more IT they look at not be so until they go again. No, they don't finally involve for this matter. So tell the Lagos election. They don't say make the they won't review the Lagos election because the video where they go viral all over media where people they carry ballot boss. He say it shows say INEC never supposed to announce the winner. When they know say some poly units, they will be say they know submit the results. Why be say that they announce winner? He say right now this is not how democ democracy is supposed to be. He say because many people even they fear to come outside to come vote, and it's not supposed to be like that. They never come up for the shock of presidential election. The country go land for governorship election. Which is four years coming again. People go to fear to come outside. That is why they need to step in to make sure say they show the Nigerian people say the way elections supposed to go, not be so it go for Nigeria. My people not be smart, you know. It be like say the EU people won't continue to the drag eye neck. EU people don't carry and go national TV, oh my people. This will not be smart, you know. As we speak. And our core team will stay until the end of April, or till the middle of April. So um, our, our preliminary statements concluded that there had been uh, a lot of obstruction of the will of the people in the governorship and state assembly elections that took place on Saturday. Uh, nevertheless, we also were able to record on a more positive note that civil society organizations have really been working hard to try to defend democratic standards here in Nigeria and I think some credit is due there. I think the two things that I take away particularly is on the security front it was extremely negative on Saturday and it clearly discouraged some people from exercising their democratic right to make a choice, disenfranchise them. But also on the transparency side um, it, there was some improvements in the performance of the uh, election day process, the opening of the ballots uh, the polling units were on time mo for most of the time and also the uh, uploading of results onto the results viewing platform was done in real time as had been promised. So it was a, a mixed bag but the, uh, the overall voter participation on Saturday was extremely low and unfortunately doesn't tell a very happy tale. And they don't say uh, there were some improvements in transparency of the <coughs> process. Uh, from your observation, where are the areas that were lagging? Where could those other improvements uh, could have happened? Yeah, well, I think most of the problems occurred during the presidential election where polling units opened very late, where distribution of sensitive election material took place in a fairly haphazard way, uh, where the uploading of results onto IREV were very tardy, and as late as 10 p.m. on that day, there were still no results uploaded. And as we all were ex led to believe this would be a great game changer where real-time information would be available. And that wasn't the case. And then there were major problems in collation centres. In some cases, collation centres weren't open. And, and, and to go back a little bit to BVAS, sometimes they weren't operated properly by polling officers. So they were the main issues around transparency. And clearly, uh, because that didn't operate very well on the 25th of February, it discouraged a lot of people from voting because they came to the conclusion that their, count, their vote didn't matter. And that's a really bad situation to be in because already you have a low uh, voter participation now compounded by a lack of faith in the integrity of the overall process. So we tried to bring, draw attention to that in the preliminary statement which we made uh, this afternoon. Right, so, so you, your sense then is that there were lots of small fire outbreaks, if you like, in, in this uh, governorship election that had to be put out one by one and you think the authorities managed to keep a handle on it and it didn't become an inferno but you've said that your group's mission in Nigeria is to strengthen democracy do you think the election met the standard for strengthening democracy based on criteria that are internationally acceptable well, first of all, to, 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 to draw that conclusion, it would require us to compare it to previous elections. And that's not something we do. So this is a fresh mandate where this mission looks at this election and this election alone. And at the end of our process, which is coming in June, we will publish a final report which will contain conclusions and recommendations. And it's in that report that you will find 
the type of conclusions I think that you're referring mm. to. But it is impossible to ignore uh, the deficits that have occurred during the course of this overall general election, including the presidential. And it is difficult as well to point to progress being made in terms of uh, the democratic story of Nigeria. So uh, w it's premature for us to draw those conclusions. Today's preliminary statement is based on what we observed so far. And as I said, our long-term observers are still at collation centers today and the process is ongoing. But uh, unfortunately, quite a lot of negatives on this occasion. I hate to preempt your final reports, mm. which you're keeping close to your chest and don't mm. want to talk about it. Mm. You seem to be talking uh, on your preliminary report, which you've released mm. so far. But I wanted to ask you, uh, looking at what has happened in the South region in recent times with the rising coups and how important democracy is for a country like Nigeria, how much of a damage do you think this is? This has cost to the democratic fabric of the country. You're talking about hi high voter apathy. You also talked about high uh, uh, violence uh, against voters in the country. And you say, you know, this would discourage the people. Mm. How bad is this? And do you think Nigeria can redeem itself? When, when I say Nigeria now, I mean the political class. I mean the electoral body that conducts the, the elections. Do you think it's redeemable? Well, ab absolutely, it's redeemable. Um, there's no question of doubt about that and one of the things that I'd, I'd like to say is that I am really amazed by the resilience of Nigerian people who queued up for hours in difficult conditions, uh, conditions of insecurity uh, to exercise their democratic right to choose the government that they wished to have. Um, so I have no doubt that the desire and appetite for democracy will, will not be in any way reduced but unfortunately uh, a lot of people concluded that it wasn't worth their while to go to the polling stations and that's a very negative thing. And this isn't just a problem of Nigeria or of Africa. Unfortunately, across the globe we're seeing what's called democratic backsliding. And if you want to look at this at a global level, um, Freedom House in the UK recorded, we've had 17 consecutive years of downgrading of democracy across the world. So it matters. Uh, because dem democracies tend to degrade slowly and you have to really call it out when it happens and as you quite rightly say everybody said before this election it really matters not just to Nigerians but to the region and to the continent as a whole so when it doesn't go right then it's even more important to call it out and I really hope that if we do make any criticisms that they're taken in the spirit in which they were they were given which is a, 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 a about constructive criticism and you know we certainly won't turn our back on the process or the democracy and we've been at seven elections in a row since the return of democracy in 1999 and delighted and honored to be invited here again well let, let me just uh, take you back again to the criteria um that you use as a test against this election i mean you've talked about things like inclusivity, um, whether everyone can come and cast their ballots. I mean, you, you mentioned as much uh, not long ago. Transparency, uh, how the votes are gathered, collated and tabulated, and on credibility. I mean, th those are the tests against which you measure the election. In that context, what were your observations? Well, as I say, the uh, process is ongoing. I don't want to frustrate you. You're obviously uh, interested to, to see where we're going to land ultimately on these issues. But I, th I think it's uh, very clear that there are deficits in terms of inclusivity. Mm. For example, 10% um, of candidates in the state assembly and governorship elections were women. And th these are not just international standards. These are standards that Nigeria has set for itself to try to improve the representation of half the population. And if half the population are almost completely disenfranchised in this way, in terms of political participation, then that falls below any standards that Nigeria has set for itself in international conventions that it has signed up to. So, uh, you know, that's a particular point which can easily be drawn out. In terms of transparency, it's not just INEC, and it would be unfortunate if there was a conclusion that if we somehow fixed INEC or did some reforms, that that would lead to uh, you know, a silver bullet of some sort. I think the political parties have a major role to play to make sure that we achieve Absolutely. transparency. And we were able to identify problems relation to vote buying, where our long-term observers noticed that. We were able to identify problems in relation to abuse of incumbency, 
where um, those who are non-government participants in the election were unable to attend rallies and they were uh, where, where incumbents use the office to promote their candidacy which again falls below the standards that Nigerians have set for themselves. Okay, stay with us. We do have some breaking news. Well, the All Progressives Congress APC, Reverend Father Heinsent Elia, has been declared winner of the Benue State Governorship election after scoring the highest votes to beat his closest rival, the People's Democratic Party's candidate, Titus Guba. Elia led in the race with a margin of 251,020 votes. Returning officer for the governorship election in Benue, Professor Adamu Farouk Kuta, who is the Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, announced that Elia polled a total of 473,933 votes to lead Uba, who, who had 223,913 votes, while Labour Party's Herman Hembe trailed behind them with a total of 41,881 votes. Again, breaking news, Benue State has gone to the All Progressives Congress. Well, in a moment, we're hoping to be crossing over live mm -hmm. to Port Harcourt to speak to Arise correspondent Andy Omano Omano. But we've still got the chief observer of the European Union's election observation mission here, uh, Barry Andrews. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. I was going to ask you, those um, places that you, those um, areas that you identified problems, for example, with the political parties and so on. I mean, we've heard the Americans, I think the British and so on, saying that there would be sanctions against people who are found to have violated um, the election rules, guidelines, and propriety. I mean, it, c can you speak a little bit to that? Is that something that you would be recommending? Well, uh, I'm glad to say that's way beyond my pay grade to talk about <laughs> sanctions. <laughs> we, we, our mission is very dedicated to the very the process itself. And the question of sanctions is a matter for uh, uh, the European Council. Yeah, in, but they base a lot of their conclusions on your report. They, 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 they may well do so, yeah. but I w uh, we, w we certainly wouldn't be recommending, making any recommendations right. of that nature. Anything like that would be seen as political interference. And we are here to make an assessment based on the evidence that we collate, based on the observations that we make, and then we make a final report. Mm. We would never get into this person should resign, that person should have sanctions, those kind of conclusions would never get into it. And because we follow this... My people, now the video now on our new watch really soon. On our see what you happen for inside the video. All right, my people, I would like to end the video for you. Make sure let me know what you all are. for the comment section. And if you are never subscribed, make sure subscribe. So that you will not miss any little edges where they upload. And I'm about to like all our will Bye guys, catch my next video. Bye guys.